Hot take. New is better than old. Seriously though, people love new things. Look at this. Hundreds of well-adjusted adults standing in line for a thing that they could just get a few days later. But instead, they're doing it now because it's new. Games are the same way. A game makes the most sales when it first releases. Why, you might ask? Because it's fresh off the presses, baby. New is good. Old, bad. Usually. However, there are some games that are so interesting, so genre-defining, their legacy lives on even after their release date. Dragon Guard is not that game. <laughs> but I decided to play it anyways because the newest game in the series, Nier Automata, has some interesting characters. Characters that I wouldn't be able to fully appreciate without playing through the entire series. So I did. And let me tell you, Dragon Guard is the strangest game I've ever played. It begins. Kaim and his Union soldiers battle towards the castle to protect Furiai, goddess of the seals, and Kaim's only sister. The Empire murdered Kaim's parents and destroyed his kingdom. Now it assaults the very castle where his sister is safeguarded. With revenge cold in his heart, Kaim hurls himself at the army of the Empire. Yo, so this is the game. We play as Kaim, a completely murderous psychopath and you spend the majority of the game killing clusters of enemies while running through various oversized maps. I have a lot of things to say about the combat for this game, but just know for now that it's very simplistic and very repetitive. One thing, however, I want to reiterate is just how large these maps are. It takes minutes to run from one area of the map to another, and there's basically nothing to interact with. Outside of groups of enemies that appear to pop in and out of nowhere, the maps are barren. But alright, enough complaining. Back to the game. You fight your way single-handedly to the castle while your soldiers spit exposition at you. Your sister, I mean the goddess Furiai, is in the castle. Lord Inuat is with the goddess. They're within the castle walls. Your sister, I mean her ladyship, the goddess. Suddenly, you're told this. The Empire soldiers have caught a dragon in the castle Bailey. I'm sorry, what? So you're telling me that while the Empire is sieging the Union on two fronts, they managed to capture a dragon at the same time? When? How? It, it makes no sense. Dragon. Kill me if you desire. 
wretched human. Tell me, do you still want her to live, dragon? What? A pact! There's no other way! <gasps> what makes you worthy of a pact with me? Worthy or not, I wish to live. Despise me if you will, but I shall not die! Your answer! A pact or death! A pact is a powerful but dangerous contract. When a human and monster agree to be pact partners, the human gains immense strength, and if either party were on the cusp of dying, they would become fully healed. But in return, the human must sacrifice something very important about themselves, and if either pact partner were to die, the other would follow. Kaim lost his parents to a black dragon when he was still a child. This made him hate everything. Dragons especially. With that which killed my parents. And yet his survival is dependent on the appraisal of one. Ironic. Still alive? You're blessed by the devil's luck. A pact with you. In the besieged castle, the dying pair make the fateful decision to live. Kaim and the Red Dragon are spared. After saving their lives, they decide to test their newfound powers on the enemy. Wasn't there someone they were trying to save? Eh, I, I guess not. This is the first of many flying missions you'll be doing throughout the game. They mostly consist of flying from one target to the next before blowing it up. You can shoot regular fireballs, charge fireballs, a screen wiping super attack. It's pretty bare bones, but it serves the purpose of breaking up the slog of melee combat. It's alright. After killing waves of enemies, instead of rescuing your sister, Kaim's guards remind him that the goddess is in danger, so they return to the battlefield. Kaim! Empire soldiers have appeared around the castle! Please return at once! This is the main differentiator between a game like this and a game like Dynasty Warriors. Basically, in most of the ground missions, you're able to hop on your dragon at any point in time, giving you the ability to avoid melee enemies entirely, shoot fireballs, move across the map at blinding speeds, as well as having a different screen wiping super that's not as good, but cool. There are downsides though. For one, the fireballs are really weak, and you can't stop at any point when you're on the dragon, so there'll be plenty of times where you're trying to destroy a group of enemy, and then you'll end up flying over them and have to turn around. Actually, I'll straight up say it, you're gonna have to do that almost every single time after the first few missions. Sometimes doing it two, three, four times. And you can't just run around the map and just fire at everybody either, because if you get far enough away from an enemy, their health will reset. Also, on pretty much every map where you can fly the dragon, there's a lot of enemies that can shoot you down extremely easily. This isn't like in the air where you can get hit 50 times. You get hit once or twice with the dragon by an arrow or something and you get knocked off and then you have to call the dragon back again. No human mortal is a match for my crimson wings, fools. See, 
It's gonna take me so long to hit that guy. Kill that guy. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hop down. Go. Uh no. The battle rages with Kaim's newfound ally. Despite the fact that you are obliterating hundreds of enemies, the castle is besieged. Again? Lord Kaim! The Empire has breached the castle! Please come quickly! You storm the front gates and rush to save your sister. But before Kaim can enter the castle, the price of his pact is made apparent. So, your voice is lost. The trifling price to pay for the pact. No matter. I shall speak for the both of us. Into the castle alone? Very well, I will await you here. I will know soon enough when you die. My life is now your life. You cannot live on hatred alone. Excellent advice that will surely be ignored. The Red Dragon takes this opportunity to explain more of the information involving their pact. Even at great distances, pact partners can hear each other's voices. The voice. It is akin to sending thoughts through the air. Yeah, uh, don't think about it too hard. Stop! Kaim slaughters his way through the castle with reckless abandon, for if the goddess were to die, the end of the world would soon follow. Kaim! Kaim! It's enough. He's dead. Full of bloodlust as always. But you helped me. Once again. Inuart was Kaim's best friend and betrothed to Furiai before she became the goddess. You basically catch them up on what's been happening, and then for some reason you just show them your tongue. Which by the way, they never do an animation like this for the rest of the game. So why they felt like they needed to animate this particular image, I, I genuinely can't tell you. The castle is no longer safe. I thought I would take Furiai to the Elf Village. Since the Elves are bound to eternal neutrality, their village will be a safe haven from the Empire. While it may be dangerous to take the Goddess from the castle, what else is there to do? Furiai is the Goddess that protects the Sacred Seal. But before that, she was my betrothed. I will protect her. And what about you, Kyan? You once called Furiai your sister. And instead of helping lead the army or clear out the rest of the troops in the area or retreat immediately, Inuit decides now is the best time for him to sing everyone a song. The usual song? This marks the end of all canon events in Drakengard. So this is where things get really confusing. There are 13 chapters to Drakengard and there are 5 endings, but you only really make it to chapter 8 before you get the first ending. Where things start to diverge is that after every ending you complete, more missions open up earlier throughout the story, changing the events of what happens. Things as simple as what location you go to, or what characters you meet, or what tasks you accomplish are completely different based on these missions. Therefore, there is no real canon in the first Dragon Guard game. 
It also makes it really hard for me to recap it for you guys because we're going to be jumping around and things aren't going to be making sense and we'll be talking about the same things multiple times but from different aspects. It's really confusing, so I've done my absolute best to try to simplify it. Things are going to be left out. Things might get a little weird at some points, but like th this is literally the best I can do. Just, just give me a fucking break, dude. Holy shit. As the group set up camp, the Red Dragon hears a voice from the Elf Village. What is it? They attacked the village of the elves. It may already what? be gone. <sighs> I heard a voice. It would be better to go elsewhere. Nonsense! The Pact Beast may have powers, but I believe only my own eyes. Come on! We're going to the village now! <sighs> Freya. No, I... I'm well. That's not true. You carry the awful weight of the seal. We must find you a place to rest. Inuart's desire to protect Furiai has blinded him to the truth. He urges them forward with desperation thick in his voice. The goddess. The world shall surely perish. Furia, now that you are the goddess, my world is already dead. Furia was betrothed to Inuart before she became the goddess. Unfortunately, the goddess cannot marry. She must remain pure, so their time together was forever cut short. This saddens Furia as well, just for different reasons. They soon make it to the village, or what's left of it. Hell has come here. What shall I do? The Hierarch Verdelay. I hear his voice. His voice? The Hierarch has a pack beast too? Yes, a dragon. A petrified dragon. Where is he now? He is at the temple in the desert. He wants you to go to him for your own safety. Oh, Furiai. You must forgive me. I'm not strong enough to protect you. But your songs, they call me. Songs? Pray for strength. Will you come? We must investigate further. Go with Buriai and protect her. We shall follow. Kaim and the Red Dragon decide to stay and look for clues while Inuart escorts Furiai to the Hierarch Vertile. As they search, they find a message written in blood. Speak not the Watchers. Draw not the Watchers. Write not the Watchers. Sculpt not the Watchers. Sing not the Watchers. Call not the Watchers' name. The commandments have a simple meaning. It does not matter what you do, the Watcher's infectious belief will spread. Soon after, the crew finds a dying elf with even more disturbing news. In the valley, the cult of the Watchers has a shrine. They took everyone there. <laughs> the Watchers again? What are they? Who are the Cold the Watchers, and are they responsible for the recent successes of the Empire? Yes. As they approach the shrine, new enemies begin to appear. Red variants of soldiers that are immune to magic and dragon attacks because... red, I guess? Lord Kaim, the red soldiers, they're protected from magic! Like, watch what happens if I do magic on them. I hope I don't die. 
they shoot green balls and they hit you for so much damage. So like you just you just can't use magic anywhere near them or you just get fucked. The shrine is guarded by a magician of the cult of the watchers. They have the ability to levitate, create false clones, and shoot balls of energy. Kaim dispatches them with these, however. So, the elves were taken elsewhere? What does the Empire want? <laughs> How should I know what ambitions drive you humans? What do those red eyes mean? Verdele. His voice it is gone. With nothing left to find at the shrine, in contact with Verdele suddenly lost, the pair rush to the desert. Or do they? During this version of events, a dying elf tells Kaim that the Empire is attacking the fairy village. Please, please help us. The Empire has taken our village. And where are you from? From the fairy valley that lies yonder. Please. Do you go to save lives? or to take them. He rushes to that location, gleeful at the opportunity to spill more blood. My brothers butchered, our home put to flame, and where was I? Mm? What's this? What's this? You betrayed your brothers, your sorry, pitiful little brothers, dead on the ground. <laughs> what fun! What fun! bear to think of it. <laughs> Makes you sick. Humans are pathetic. Pathetic. Dirty. Smelly. Might as well just die. Hey, that's it. Kill yourself. Go on. Finish it off. Useless human. But I... <laughs> You're scared? Dying is good. You don't want to die? Really? No. What a fool. Seriously. Finish yourself off. Oh, hold on! Of course! Let's make a fact! What do you... mean? You don't get it? Hello? Is that skull as hollow as a helmet? Hm. You and me, together forever! <laughs> loser! Loser! But seriously, let's do it! A pact! Meet Leonard, a kind-hearted recluse who lives with his three younger brothers. After leaving for the forest alone, the Empire passes through their home on the way to the elf village. Leonard's brothers are murdered ruthlessly. He tries to kill himself out of survivor's guilt, but is too scared to go through with it. 
a nearby fairy decides to torment the elf with the goal of forming a contract. Kaim first meets him in the elf village. Hmm. The sound of your blade tells me you are a Union soldier. I am Leonard, at your service. It soon becomes evident that the price Leonard paid for his pact was his eyesight. Yes, my eyes are blind. Like you, I have paid for a pact. To be blind to the foolish hopelessness of humanity is a happy fate. Yet, I am not blind to the knowledge. I will go with you, Kaim. Let us leave these bodies where they lie. We must hurry to the desert. The goddess is in danger, I fear. They say that no man is beyond forgiveness. Leonard is a hollow man who decides to join Kaim in the hopes that he finds death. There is, however, a strange interaction before they leave. Leonard prays over the soldiers he was forced to kill. When Kaim tells Leonard to leave the body, he refuses. The dead are returned to the earth, their lives to be mourned. To Leonard, all life is sacred and worth valuing. Kaim, however, has no such sympathy. After a bit of Kaim's patented persuasion, very well, Leonard relents. This is the tone of the relationship between the two. They view the world through very opposing lenses and are rarely seen getting along. This runs incongruent with traditional adventure stories. Usually the first companion picked up by the main character is someone who closely mirrors his values and opinions. They end up becoming not only allies, but the closest of friends. Leonard is a slight subversion of that expectation. After this cutscene, you've unlocked your first ally, which you can use during combat. After equipping them, allies can be used three times a ground mission, and they allow you to swap places with Kaim. They have their own health bars that slowly drain over time, and their own weapons slash abilities. You can use these to keep Kaim from dying in a difficult situation, or to clear groups of enemies with their honestly OP magic attacks. A special bonus that these allies have is that their magic attacks cannot be blocked by the red armor that enemies have. Therefore, in most situations, they're honestly stronger than Kaim. Call not the Watcher's name. What is this? Leonard's enhanced hearing picks up the sounds of fire. I can see it. The forest. A flame. And where are you looking? Is this the forest of the seal? The Empire has invaded. What shall we do? The crew wastes no time in rushing off to protect it. They have come this far. The seal is it safe. You suffer guilt over your brother's death. You must do this. That smell. The forest. The forest is burning. Quickly. The forest of the seal is under attack! When the crew arrives, Leonard is pestered by the fairy once again. Ah! Our forest is burning! Our forest is burning! All because useless humans come tromping over the land! Awful, smelly, smelly, awful creatures! We must do something! Hark you, hark! Look in the shadows of the trees! The ones hiding away are probably fine. <laughs> this, that, what, which? <laughs> the shadows of the trees. Look, look closely, Leonard. Look closely. Oh, it smells fishy. What will you 
do? What will you do? <laughs> Doesn't it feel dangerous? Are you shaking? <laughs> Over here! 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 <laughs> it informs him of a shocking discovery. Just young conscripts. Right, right! <laughs> young soldiers right out of training, gutted like fish! <laughs> if the garrison is here, then the prisoners should be too. Among their enemy are conscripts, children's soldiers just out of training. Leonard is mortified at the realization and begs Kaim to spare them. Kaim, speak to them! They will lay down their swords! He does not. Soldiers are soldiers! Do not forget who is your enemy! The garrison soldiers are all conscripts. Kaim, do not slaughter them so mercilessly! One, aren't you, Leonard? They are so powerless. Yet your sword spares none. Your heart is black. Please help us! No! I cannot. I cannot raise my weapon against such children. Help me! We've done the wrong! Mother, I don't want to die! The soldiers are mere child conscripts. Please, show them mercy! Leonard finds a survivor, the same age as one of his brothers. Please help me. I'm... I'm afraid. Peace now. It is all over. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Feeling pity for the enemy? Can't start wavering now. He is just like my brother. His voice. Leonard. What are you doing? Oh, he is just a child. In a desperate act of defiance, he shields the child's body from Kaim. <gasps> what? You fool! <laughs> fool! Fool! A masterpiece of a fool! <gasps> It turns out to be a trick. They were never children to begin with. This is obviously a cop-out to lower the ESRB rating. A still all-around disturbing scene that somehow made it into a game this old. How could he? He made me the fool. War makes devils of all men. You never learn. This needless battle is my fault. Please forgive me. Pity your letters is a habit you humans would do well to undo. I am sorry. Forgive me. Why this wasted pity? It is just... He won't say! <laughs> He'll never say the truth! It's a secret! <laughs> It would be better that I die here. Leonard, finally succumbing to despair, begs Kaim to take his life, for he is a dark secret. Leonard is... Well, before we talk about that, let's talk about character traits. Now, most characters in fiction will have positive and negative character traits. In general, good guys tend to have more positive than negative traits overall, while bad guys tend to have more negative. This isn't always the case, however, it's just a more gross generalization. 
So let's take a look at Leonard's character traits. He's a pacifist that only fights when absolutely necessary. He's kind and respectful to all the people around him. He's an extremely talented fighter even when blind. And he believes all life deserves some level of respect. Now what character trait do you think they gave him that was negative to balance it out? Leonard is a closeted pedophile. It was his urges for children that pushed him to leave his family alone. And while he relieved himself in the forest, his brothers were murdered by the Empire. His guilt and shame for what he desires and the price it caused him has broken the man. And he is merely a shell of his former self. Too afraid to die, but too hopeless to live. You, you are. My name is of no concern. I simply ask that you smelly savages leave the forest anon. Oh dear, how rude of me. Still, as a leader, one must say what one must say. The ruler of the fairies. They are interrupted by the king of the fairies, who just kind of acts like a douche. He then lets it slip that Inuit and Furii are in danger. The desert is a hot place, and bodies do rot quickly. The desert? What about the desert? Oops! <laughs> I let it slip. Those idiot priests are lined up and knocked down one by one. Your friends may not be safe. Serve them right. <laughs> Climb to the desert! You should just let them die. Oh, but I can't say that, can I now? <laughs> they rush off to help soon after. Kaim reunites with his sister in the desert. Kaim! Thank goodness you're safe. What of Inuart and Verdele were they taken? Yes, to protect me. She informs them that Verdele and Inuart were captured while protecting her. So. The dungeon must be close. Break through and we may find them. I will be safe. I am a goddess after all. Please, Kaim. You must save Inuart and Verdele. He decides to head to a nearby dungeon in search of them. On their way to the dungeon, the Red Dragon questions Kaim about his relationship with his sister. Can you sense your sister's thoughts? The passions of her soul? It's clear to everyone that Fairy Eye loves Kaim as more than just a brother. They reach Verdele's prison and are able to psychically reconnect. I sense Verdele. He is somewhere nearby. We must find him. I am the Hierarch Verdele, imprisoned by the Empire. Can anyone hear me? Can anyone hear me? In your heart was taken to a different prison. I pray that he is unharmed. Kaim is officially able to meet Hierarch Verdele, leader of the religious branch of the Union, and the only priest able to directly speak with the goddess. At last, so you are Kaim. Verdele, you know something. Tell us, what is happening? It is here that he's informed of the Empire's plan. The Empire is not satisfied with mere conquest. They seek complete reconstruction. Of the world? Yes. 
They want the seeds of resurrection that will appear when the seals are broken. The goddess's life is in great danger. The seeds of resurrection? Humans twist even the myths to their own purposes. Hmm? Please help. The Empire must not destroy these holy places. The entire world is in danger. As each seal is broken, the burden on the goddess grows greater still. Huh? Please! Even the Empire's soldiers deserve our mercy. You cannot preach to this one. He cares only for settling old grudges. Not even Vertile is able to sway Kaim's rage. May the gods bless us, their poor children. What difference between he who prays and he who kills? Fools, one and all, these humans. If only... If only I had more strength. If only I had more strength, then I could protect Furiae. Who's there? I could protect her and make her my own. Stop it! Take her in my arms. Surrender her to no man, my betrothed. She shall love only me. Please stop. All mine. Furiae, all mine. All mine. All mine. No man can have her. No man. Not even Kaim. No. No more. Loves only me. Looks only to me. Holds only me. Furiae loves only me. Uh. Me. Me. Forgive me. Deeply. Deeply, please forgive me. Gaze only on me. Please, gaze upon me. The goddess will die. The one who serves as the seal must be killed by the strain. The burden will destroy her. No. She is just a normal woman. One who was to lie beside you, laughing and carefree. If she ceases to be a goddess, can she become a woman again? For many, many years. What should I do? I want to help her. You need strength. Strength that comes from a pact with a dragon. Kaim. Kaim could help. Kaim? Allow him to bathe in her gratitude and love. She... She is my bride. She is my bride. Her kisses are mine alone. Her love is mine alone. If only I had the strength. If only I had the strength. Spooky. Vertile decides to give more info about the four seals. The desert, the sea, the forest. They are trying to destroy a seal that protects the world. Three temples and the goddess. They are all that protect this world. If they are lost, the closest seal is the desert temple. You must hurry there. Their own sacred temples. Humans are beyond my understanding. We're going to take a break from explaining the story to talk about the weapon system. In Drakengard, there is a whopping 65 weapons for you to unlock and use, and the magic abilities that are attached to each weapon are different. You'll have some weapons that make you invisible, some that make you invincible, some that make you run super fast, some that shoot lightning, earth fire, you name it, there's probably a weapon that does that thing. And it's really cool, but there's a few big problems. The first one being how you unlock these weapons. Every weapon is unlocked during certain missions at a pretty consistent rate throughout the entire game and the expedition mode, which we'll talk about later. This causes the problem that to unlock a large portion of the weapons, you need to be farther into the game where the enemies have higher HP and do more damage. This means by time you get to that point, the weapons that you unlock aren't strong enough at their base level to kill the enemies around them. 
So if you're just doing a playthrough, chances are by time you get to that point where you need to level up your weapons to be useful, you're only going to have like four, maybe five. And this is going to cause you to just basically stick to those same weapons, not really exploring the entirety of the options at your disposal. Weapons level up by killing enemies, and each weapon has a specific amount of enemies that you need to kill before it levels up, which then increases its damage, the number of attacks you can do in a combo, and the magic abilities of the weapon. So if you're halfway through the game and you get this really cool looking weapon that might heal you or do something really cool like that, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time just smacking the same enemies over and over or you're gonna have to go back and grind. And the combat system in this game is nowhere near good enough to make it worth going back to old missions to, to grind on weaker enemies to level up your weapons. Especially because these weapons have absurd amounts of kills necessary to level them up. Some of them being 200, 300, even more just to get it up a tier. So for 98% of people who are just playing through this game for the story, which is pretty much the only good part of this game, you're just gonna gravitate to the first four weapons or so you unlock and you're not gonna use the other ones most likely. And it's really disappointing because the one saving grace of the combat is the magic system. Another problem is unlocking the weapons is very unclear and for a lot of them can be very tedious. Some maps you might have to clear all the enemies on it to actually unlock the weapons. Some you might have to do within a certain amount of time. Some you might have to do an arbitrary amount of steps or travel to a point on the map where you would never think to travel. It's interesting to see that there's different ways to unlock it, but once again, without a guide, without something specifically telling you what to do, it's a pain. And to add on top of that, some of the weapons have to be unlocked in hard mode, they cannot be unlocked in normal mode, but it doesn't say anywhere which ones are which. So you could be playing on normal mode, try to unlock a weapon you looked up, and then it not appear, and then you'll be like, well, I guess I just need to change the difficulty and do it all over again. Miserable. By the way, if this video gets 100k views, I'll make a tier list on all of those weapons and level them all up to level 4. Luckily though, that shit ain't happening, so back to the story. You approach the desert temple in a rush, for the Empire already has boots on the ground. The temple is besieged. The Imperial Arbalesters. They are the enemy of the Flying Dragon. Defeat them first. You also find Inuit's heart. Keep that in mind. In you are hard falling on the sand. Where is he? Why does the Empire wish to destroy the seals? Do they seek the seeds of resurrection? The seal must hold. It must. The attack was only a diversion. Kaim, you must return to the seal at once. This does not deter you ever, as you cut down as many enemies as possible. Look out! Oh. Servants of the darkness, be gone! You're then forced to fend off the evil wraiths drawn to the seal's power. There's actually an interesting mechanic where walking slowly stops the wraiths from detecting you, which is a pretty cool change of pace but it's overshadowed by one burning question. Why not let the race live? Even if they're evil, you're literally fighting an army with arguably three people. Having race fighting anything that's near the seal can be extremely useful, especially if you decide to do something stupid, like, for example, stop protecting the seal and go fight enemies. Anyways, Kaim kills the race and stops protecting the seals to go fight enemies. Wait, didn't we see this already? In you are hard falling on the sand. Where is he? Keep that in mind. The Empire then sends its forces to flank the temple, destroying it. Ah, the seal! The seal is broken! This place has fallen. We should return to the goddess. After regrouping with your forces, you show Furry Eye Inuart's harp. You are safe, but where is Inuart? His 
top. It was lying on the desert sands. Keep that in mind. She collapses with despair, unable to comprehend the situation. They are soon interrupted by a horrific voice calling out to them via a pet. Kaim, can you hear that? The red dragon is able to trace the signal to a nearby imperial gowl in the desert. Kaim travels there immediately, leaving his sister to grieve alone. On the way over, Verdelay tries his best to reason with Kaim's bloodlust. If you are truly her brother, you would not be so quick to bloody your sword. In return, he witnesses a massacre. Kaim, do you wish to kill the entire empire alone? The red dragon, however, seems more concerned about the target of our rescue. Theirs will be an ill starred meeting. <laughs> no matter how much I hear it, I can't avoid that voice. Is that so? I've grown fond of it, I have. <laughs> Long as it's a woman, huh? You're the odd one. Like it an elf like that? Have you seen her eyes? Pretty scary if you ask me. Even when she smiles, they're dead. Me, I feel sorry for her. Better for her if she had died with the rest of her family. <laughs> Right then, let's go settle her down. Careful, mate. She'll get you for sure. That's all right. We're not her type now, are we? What the? Oh, bloody hell! The Union! They're attacking! <laughs> The elf's name is Ariosh, a woman who lost her child or children, they say both, to the Empire during the war, driving her insane. Soon after, the children in her village begin to go missing one by one. The villagers eventually find out the culprit and had her arrested. When the Union attacked her prison, she was severely injured and left to die. It was there that she was approached by Undyne and Salamander, who made a pact with her to save her life. But wait. That makes no sense. Ariosh called for help using the airwaves that only pack partners can use while she was in the process of dying. Dead. Dead. They are all dead. The voice has become more unstable. If we do not hurry. <sighs> <sighs> Harry, the voice changes. It becomes faint. But we already know that pack partners get fully healed when the pact is made. Plus, when Kai meets her, she's already fully healed, which means the injuries were sustained before she made the pact. So how is Ariosh dying from her injuries received before the pact while calling out for help using the powers of the pact? Fuck you. Kaim rushes to the gowl as the voice grows weaker. Kaim, let the gods soothe your heart. In these times, faith is all we have. By the way, fuck these enemies in particular. There are so many of them, and they do so much damage. 
And that thing about being able to be comboed by enemies and killed really quickly I talked about earlier, this is like where it happens. I'm dead! No! Oh! What the fuck? What do we do? I almost just fucking died! Oh, no, please. Please. Oh, dear God. What, what is he doing? Why is he moving so fast? What's happening? I have played through this game multiple times, and I have so much health, but I still almost died in this mission and had to use a weapon that heals me when I use his power. That's the only way I made it through this mission without dying this run through. Imagine how hard it is your first time playing through this mission. I hate these enemies. These enemies suck. You too have a packed beast. What is your name? Adios. You surrendered your womb. Yo, but for real though, she's a baddie and she can't get pregnant? Send her my way, bruh. For real, for real. Tell me, are there any children here? Fear not, they have been evacuated. Hmm. So, there are none here. A pity. They're so sweet. <laughs> But an adult will suffice. Get back! <laughs> Arios has become so unhinged and powerful that the Archpriest is forced to seal her mind, keeping her as a prisoner to save others from her homicidal tendencies. This rock spell will hold her, but for how long I cannot say. I will take her with me for her own good, as well as for others around her. So this is what you call human kindness. <laughs> and human kindness. In this version of events, Kaim is informed by Ariosh that the desert seal has already been broken, and the seal of the ocean is next. Too late. What are you telling us? The desert temple seal is already broken. Yes. Can you not sense it? No. The seal? Broken? It cannot be. At your decision, the crew heads to the ocean seal instead. They are distracted on their path by truly horrific atrocities. Many gods. Empire soldiers are seen tossing kids in the ocean to drown. Unable to handle the sight, the crew launch into action. But the children. First, we must protect the sea. They take children, then cast them away like bones at a feast. Such cruelty. Fine. If you do not defeat them quickly, the woman and the children will be lost. Which one tastes best? Even the red dragon's heart is swayed by such distasteful acts. So many elf children. It is no wonder her heart became embittered so. Ariosh reaches the children first, however. Her thirst for child flesh overcame the mind control placed upon her. Ariosh! Ariosh! Surely not the children! The children? Arios, what have you done? She made swift work feasting on the few that survived. So sweet. So sweet. The cute little children. No need to worry. I will take care of you. So sweet. I smell blood. Why? Ariosh, do you not have children yourself? They were killed. Killed by the Imperial forces and cast away into an ocean of blood. 
And there shall be no more children for her. The price for our pact was her womb. Solitude and chaos for all eternity. Only with death shall it end. Now, on to the next temple. Ariosh is a character who lost everything that mattered to her. She stared into the horrible abyss that any person would fear, and it changed her. The children in her village were consumed in an act of protection. In her warped mind, the closer they were to her womb, the safer they'd be. There is no nuance to her character. There's no redeeming factors. There's only a truly evil soul destined to be alone for all eternity. The Temple of the Sea serves as one of the three seals. It cannot be lost. The seals keep chaos from the world. Pain. They must never be broken. The Empire must not break into the Sea Temple. Defend it with your lives. Ah! The seal! The seal is broken! Not only were you unable to save a single soul, the detour causes you to lose your chance at protecting the seal. Could this have been the Empire's plan all along? Where is the temple's seal? Regrettably, it is gone. I see. Pretty. So pretty. Man makes the seal, and man does break the seal. When his foolish gains never end. We are still safe. The last seal is intact. I hear no cries from the goddess. Each time we play our piece, we find ourselves one move behind. Back to the desert. Regardless of which temple you fail to defend, Kaim and his friends flee to the wastelands to rest and recuperate. That smell. However, there is a new villain standing in their way. Another dragon? In your heart. With a dragon? That means you have made a pact. Ferii, come with me. There is nothing to fear. The world will be better now. You need not be the only sacrifice. He has been broken. I'm not weak anymore, Kyan. Why are you staring at me like that? I'm strong now! Inuit's vulnerability was the jealousy he felt towards Kaim, and in his weakness, the mysterious voice overcame him. I traded my songs for strength, Kaim. I can protect you now, Furiai. He sold his songs for the power he desired, the power to claim the one he loved. Don't give me that face, Kaim. I can see the scorn in your eyes! Sacrifice your own sister in the service of revenge! I feel like this line really hits home and honestly makes me kind of agree with Inuert. How many times has Kaim prioritized fighting the Empire over protecting Furry Eye? How many times has he left her alone to satisfy his thirst for violence? Hell, the opening scene of the game is him fighting out on the battlefield instead of staying by Furry Eye's side. And even when he gains the power from the Dragon's Pact, he prioritizes destroying the Empire over saving Furiai, almost getting her killed. If it wasn't for Inuit, she probably would have been dead before he made it to the chambers. Even in the fairy village, instead of following his group to the desert to make sure Furiai is safe, he decides to search for clues on the Call of the Watchers, which leads to Inuit being captured and mind controlled. Kaim does love his sister, but compared to his hatred of anything that goes against the Union, she's still less important.
The Black Dragon's great strength elevated his power above that of even Kimes. And with little effort, she was his. Welcome to a world without song. The crew are forced to watch helplessly, as anywhere it steals furry eye away. Also, how did his harp get there? He lost it earlier. Inuart's heart falling on the sand. Inuart's heart? His... harp. It was lying on the desert sands. Keep that in mind. Kaim waits for the dragon's wounds to heal before chasing anywhere to the Imperial territory. The importance of saving Furry Eye is twofold. While she is one of the only things Kaim actually cares about, she is also the goddess. Furry Eye is one of the four seals that keeps the world from ending. And for all the crew know, she may already be dead. If we ignore the Imperial troops, the Union will suffer. Kaim, can you scatter their army? Now Kaim is normally a psychotic murderer. But recent events pushed him a step further. I cannot help but feel concerned for the goddess. I think you worry as well, Kaim. His rage at losing his sister has fully consumed him, and he throws himself into the enemy without thought or strategy. Do you laugh? Does the spilling of the blood of so many amuse you so? The bodies pile higher. Even as the flowers on the graves wither. I understand your passion, but should you slaughter with such reckless abandon? Also, here's this really shitty cutscene that tells us what we already know. Your parents were killed by a dragon? So, to the Empire, the goddess will be there. Time. Your parents were killed by an empire dragon. But you must not live only for revenge. Relentless jackals, let my crew's fire clean the scourge. I am be merciful and end your killing ways. No, I can give no more, sir. Damn you! Must we spend all our strength fighting common troops? Are those ogres? 
They're attacking the village. So, they were to be living sacrifices for the Empire, just as your parents were. After slaying hordes of subhumans, the red dragon reads the mind of a dead ogre. Not sure how she does that, and it never happens again, so fuck it. Let me read its mind. She sees a fortress under heaven. The goddess. The empire. A fortress. A fortress? Where? Where under heaven? A scream? If that is the fairy's death cry, then the three seals have been broken. Only one seal still remains. That is the goddess herself. Are we too late? We must fly to the lands of the Empire, and then find the fortress. To reach the Empire's lands, it seems you must pass through this narrow gorge. They are well, but a race that can control the stone itself will be The Toasting Caverns are filled with members of Cold of the Watchers, and the end of the path is even defended by a column. The crew narrowly escape defeat and prepare to rush to the Union Army's side. The Imperial soldiers are controlled like puppets. Such power. In a distant ravine, a boy watches his mother take her final breaths. It's all right. It's all right. It will be better soon. No. No. You can't die now. Sere. Oh, Sere. My beautiful child. Oh, I love only you. Mother? Mother? Are you sleeping? Father won't move. Mother? Mother? I'll kiss you and then you'll wake up. Right? Mother? What is it? What's wrong? Why don't you answer me? Wake up. Please, wake up! You loved just me, didn't you? Just me. Only me. Only me. There's no one left in our village. Mother and father aren't... even here. Golem, it was you who led us here. You'll go to the place where the cult is? Take me! Take me too! They took my sister! Golem. You made a pact with this child? Sally the Lord. Sally's mom. Here is dangerous. I go too. I gave all my time to Golem. He said he'd be my friend if I did that. Do you understand what it means to give away all your time? Others will age and die, but you will never grow, never pass on. You will be alone, a child. I won't be alone. Colum will be with me. Besides, I became the little hero. Do you know that story? My mother used to tell it to me. More myths. Why are humans so quick to hide from truth in castles made of clouds?
Meet Sere, the final descendant of a generation of golem sorcerers. When his village was attacked by the Empire, his mother sacrificed herself to help form the contract between her son and Gollum. He sacrificed his time, which basically means he's immortal. While the others pity him, he sees this as a positive, for he believes that this makes him the little hero, a story his mother used to tell him when he was young. He joins the crew in the hopes that they can find his sister, who was taken by the Cult of the Watchers. And now we're back to this shitty cutscene. This time, however, Sere wants to check out a nearby location for his sister. There! Over there! That's the valley where my sister disappeared! Please! There might be some clue about where Mana went! Of the Watchers also come. The valley is a perilous place. Did your sister go there alone? Uh, no. With her mother. But anyway, that's where she went missing! As they search the Crimson Mountains, Sere saunters ahead of the group carefree. Careful, Sere. This is a dangerous land. Sorry, but... but I'm so excited! You came all this way to help find my sister. Thank you. The prospect of finding his sister fills him with a joy only a child could express. Child. Stay back from there. In an instant, however, ah! a fuck off huge golem just crushes him instantly. But like, actually, how did no one notice it? Like, it's huge. Like, how is it even possible for it to sneak up on them? Luckily, Sarah is immortal. Sere, are you all right? Sere, answer me! Huh. How did that urchin survive? Unpleasant little child! They continue the search as Sere talks about their home life. Mother used to hit my sister Mana a lot. But only Mana, never me. Mother never hit me. She saved all her anger for Mana instead. Sere, you must not blame yourself so harshly. Now, I don't care what people say. Every parent has a favorite child. That's just how it is. But when you treat one child like a king and another like a fucking punching bag, it's really disgusting. And it makes this scene hit a lot harder. Oh, I love only you. You loved just me, didn't you? Just me. Only me. Only me. The wizards of the Cult of the Watchers begin to control Sarah's companion. Golem strikes at Sere again and again. Instead of running, Sere takes the abuse until he's nearly unconscious. Sere, Sere. Seeing his friend in pain, Gollum returns to his senses. There, you see? Gollum is back. My, my friend. It really is lucky that Sere is immortal, because his actions are consistently congruent with those of an immature child. There is not a sound to be heard. 
Can Sere's sister really be in such a place as this? No human can long survive in such an evil land. They scour high and low for mana to no avail. Mana! Mana! Answer if you can hear me! It's me! Sere! Sere, please take care. Enemies may still lie in wait. Ah! Quickly! We have to go after him! <laughs> what a child! Trouble upon trouble! Such father's people are better off dead! <laughs> dead! Sere once again drops his guard and is taken by an Empire's griffin. Now the crew must rescue him from the Colosseum. Many beasts dwell here. You must be on your guard. Sere, please be safe. My child, you can die properly this time, can't you? <laughs> a wonderful prize today. A human child. A useless child that can't grow up. <laughs> You're wrong. I'm not useless. I don't grow old so I can save up time. I'll save the world. Just like the little hero. Shut up! I don't care about your fairy tales. It's true. Mother said it's true. Gollum said it's true. <laughs> the time you're needed will never come, Anjan. You're a burden on everyone. All you're good for is to be a prize in the Coliseum. I am not a burden. Who in the hell are you? We are here for Sere. An opportunity, Kai, to learn how to use your sword to save a life. Sere begins to realize that his immature attitude has wasted valuable time. Help! Mana! Mother! Help me! I'm sorry. Kai, I'm, I'm sorry. It's... it's all my fault. You are safe now. Uh, I'm sorry. I always cause such trouble. <gasps> that scream! After he has rescued, the third seal falls. The death cry of the fairies. The three seals are broken. Only the goddess remains. The very last seal. The union will soon begin the final attack. We too must go to the last battlefield. Oh, it's my fault, isn't it? I wanted to come here. I wasted your time. He wallows in guilt before being stopped by Kaim. Regret is for fools. What has been done has been done. Uh, yes. All right. Sere, your sister. Forget it. It doesn't matter now. Not anymore. Come on, we have to hurry! Now resolute, Sere urges the group forward. The final assault on the Empire awaits. The Union gathers for one last push against the Empire, but they have a final ace in the hole. Giant Cyclops enter the battlefield and force the Union to retreat. 
It's now up to Kaim and the Red Dragon to save the day. Hear our cries and show mercy to your poor children. The Cyclops are defeated and the true battle begins. The One Eyes are defeated. Now to hunt the rest of the jackals. <laughs> your favorite sport. Kaim finds himself in his element, surrounded on all sides by his worst enemies. At this point, however, his strength and rage have reached new heights. They stand no chance. Lord Kaim attacks the Empire! Soldiers, advance! We must not let him fight alone! Good! The spoils shall be ours! Soldiers, show them the strength of the Union! Must the Empire retreat now? Will I witness you? Victory. The final battle. Union and Empire, both sides have summoned all their power. Lord Kaim, now is the time to topple the Empire and avenge our king. Lord Kaim risks his life in battle. Come, soldiers, stand by his side! This is the battle to end all human battles. I pray that it will be so. This mission will have you killing more enemies than any of the other missions in the entire game. Even if you're intentionally just trying to do the bare minimum, it's very common for you to get over a thousand kills, which is just insane. And honestly, it's quite tedious. The commanders have appeared. If they escape, the battle will not end. Kaim, stop them. Has the Union won? Something is not right. There is no more to come. I feel great pressure. Something evil slouches toward us. The main force of the Empire has been defeated. The Union celebrates, and even Kaim takes a moment to bask in the victory. The goal he has been trying to achieve for years has finally been realized. What's going on? Judgment is at hand! Victory, so short-lived. The Empire's floating fortress rains balls of fire onto the remains of the battlefield. The Union has been lost, and Kaim angry. Running out of ways to say that. Vertile has fallen into despair. He believes that Furiae has been lost. Ah, ah, I do not understand. It cannot be. Has the last seal been broken? The blood of the goddess has been spilled. Kaim refuses to let him entertain the idea. It is the judgment of the gods! It is the judgment of the gods! The goddess dies and mankind is cursed! Ah! Only the gods know the truth, if we can find our way to them. They shall deal with whatever soldiers remain and head to the castle itself. If the mere threat of the seal's destruction begets such chaos, 
What if they are truly lost? The crew realizes that Furry Eye is still alive, so one of the four seals still remain. Even so, chaos still falls. If Furry Eye dies, how much worse could things really get? Where do these monsters come from? They are relentless. While your army has been decimated, the remains of the Empire have been reanimated. No doubt more tricks by the cult. Lord Kaim, what is happening? Lord Kaim! The horror. I cannot see the future. Grotesque beasts slouch upon the earth. This is... This is hell. The end of the world. Does it look like this? In the sky. What is that? What is that giant shell? Surely it is not the work of man. The hands of man cannot build portals to the air. What is the cult of the Watchers? They reach the fortress, but are unable to pierce through the heavy wind currents. We cannot go higher. There are five endings to the story of Drakengard, each branching out from a different part of the main timeline. That's going to make it a little confusing from this point out, so to keep things somewhat understandable, I'll be identifying when we begin to work towards a certain ending. If you feel like the video's been too long, get excited, because we are reaching the climax. That feels so good to say. Faria is captured in the floating temple beyond Kaim's reach. Priestess, let me have Kaim. It is there anywhere it begs to meet Kaim in battle. Release not the Watchers. I am strong. I feel love. Love for the Watchers. Love for you. Who are you? In you what? He has truly fallen to his desires. So much so that he has forgotten the object of him. Kaim! Do you think I can be beaten by you anymore? Kaim and Inuir face off in a battle high above the clouds. I'm strong now! That's why Furiai is with me! Furiai! Who is that? <gasps> My head! Furiai! The scent of the cultist weakens. Hurry! The battle ends in a standstill. The waters cannot fly! Time and the Red Dragon follow the same wind currents that anywhere it uses to reach the fortress. We must destroy the cannons before we get closer. The fortress's defenses are strong. Autonomous turrets and even other dragons stand in the pair's way. However, Kaim and the Red Dragon have grown through the blood of their enemies. Nothing can stop them. The goddess is within this fortress. She is the last seal. Protect it! It is an enormous structure, but force levitated amongst the clouds. Drive through them! Return your sister to safety by your own hands! 
time is of the essence. Kaim races through the fortress, actually putting his bloodlust at bay for the life of his sister. If the goddess is threatened, the last seal is lost. Kaim, save the goddess. Save our world. Kaim, my brother. Kaim. However, she is dead. Kaim shows a level of vulnerability that is very rarely seen. Speak not the Watchers, draw not the Watchers, write not the Watchers, sculpt not the Watchers, sing not the Watchers, call not the Watchers' name. Kaim, has the last seal been broken? Come out now, the seeds are sown. Kaim, be strong, the world itself is in mortal danger. Will you allow your sister's sacrifices to be in vain? Kaim! For as many atrocities as he's committed, all the death, all the destruction, all the rage, all the hate, at the end of the day, he's just a sad kid who lost himself to revenge. Things go differently in this version of events. We cannot go higher. It is from Leonard. What? The goddess is on the ocean in the sea fortress. What trickery do they play at? The pair decide to follow the advice of Leonard and siege the water fortress. There is a barrier. Fortress floats on the ocean. Is there no end to the cult's power? <laughs> the light, the light, the light. A rainbow, shining gold, azure, silver. <laughs> Sadly, the fortress is too heavily defended. If the ships are left afloat, we will be unable to enter the fortress. Reinforcements arrive and must now be eliminated. Fine! You can do it! The goddess is waiting for you! I see an evil cloud. There are a lot of bad men inside the fortress! Be careful! Kaim enters the fortress, but no enemies are there. The goddess's presence grows faint. Hurry, Kaim! Strange. I sense no humans here. It is too quiet. There is no voice. Is the goddess truly here? The goddess will certainly be at the sanctum. Look further within. There is no trace of the enemy in this fortress. Could the goddess be? No, no, it is nothing. Oh, no, the goddess. He races for the inner sanctum, and again, Furiae is not there. You were too slow. The goddess is gone. Are we too late? Leonard realizes that Furiae is already dead. Uh, by the gods. 
I can see it. The seeds of resurrection are already on the earth. The goddess, she... Kaim is very unwilling to accept that possibility. So they head back to the fortress of the sky to verify. I understand. You must see for yourself. It seems we must go to the very ends of hell itself. To the sky fortress. Now let's do things a little differently. If you decide to focus on destroying the towers quickly, you're able to catch the enemy before they are able to evacuate. Please hurry, you must safeguard the goddess! The enemies are enhanced with an ether that increases their abilities significantly. Forget the minion jackals, push onward! The goddess will certainly be at the sanctum. Look further within. Their strength is unnatural. Can you the from the You will not kill them all, though you have a thousand lives. To the goddess, now! The goddess, she has faded from my vision. You make it to the sanctum, but this time there is a portal connecting to the flying fortress. A space bridge? Are we too late? Kyle, I've been flown to a different place. Let us both search for the goddess. Not sure how that's even possible, but alright. The seeds of resurrection come when the seals break. Do they bring good or evil? If the seals are broken, it shall be the end. The end! Quickly, to the goddess! The seal! The seal! Answer if you can hear my voice. Tell me, are you safe? So, she still lives. But barely. We have little time left. Don't think of me as a traitor, Kain. We are creating a new world. A world where Furiai lives. Open your eyes. Hear what our priestess says. We can survive. In your heart. You mustn't stay here. Please go away now. Anywhere randomly leaving may seem like it makes no sense. And that's because it doesn't. <laughs> the Watchers do not laugh. The Watchers must not wake. <gasps> la 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 la. 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 I'm just a girl. A normal girl. What's this? This, this dirt. No, don't. Forget the seal and help me. Forget the seal and help me! Stupid, Stupid man. man. Please help me. Help me. Please. Hold me, my brother. Stop it. I can see, see into, into your, your heart. heart. <laughs> no. No, that's not true. You lie. I hate you. I hate you. Filth! Look, this Why world needs destroying. Destroy I'm dirty. I'm dirty. I'm no goddess. goddess. I, I renounce it. it. Please. Please, I'm my sorry. brother. So, you failed at playing goddess. <laughs> now what?
Do the Watchers laugh too? Even after the death of her parents, Furia still had happiness. She had her brother Kaim and her fiancé Inuert, but those things were lost to her when she became the goddess. It became her duty to reject all emotional attachments and be one of the four seals protecting the world from destruction. She hated it. She hated that she was forced to spend the rest of her life alone. She hated that Inuert's heart was broken when the engagement ended. But most of all, she hated that she was unable to pursue her true love, Kaim. She wanted to share her body with her brother. She wanted him so badly that she would lucid dream about all the things they would experience with each other. The truth that the possessed mana revealed broke the flimsy facade that Furiai crafted. And when she saw Kaim's disgust, she ended her life. She would rather die and damn the entire world than live in one without Kaim as her lover. Three different paths reaching the same conclusion. Furiai is dead. The end has come, and you have failed. Thinking about it, your entire story has been one of failure. You fail to protect the castle where Furiai was held. You fail to find a place safe enough to house her. You fail to save the elves. You fail to save Inuart, then fail to stop Furiai's captured. You fail to locate Mana. You fail to finish off the Empire and lose your army in the process. You fail to protect the seals as they fall one by one. Honestly, you, you kind of suck. The death of Inuart's love breaks him from Mana's possession. What have you done? I broke, I broke the, the seal. seal. Now, now she's useless. useless. <laughs> <laughs> I did it for you. I did it all for you, and yet I could not be seen for you. Was this all for myself? Did I kill you? La 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 la. The watchers, they dance. His heart is shattered, but his will is not broken. No more pain. For the eye. Goddess will live again. With all the seals destroyed, the seeds of resurrection begin to appear across the land. The world begins to end. Inuart, stricken by grief, decides to use the seeds to bring Furiai back. Kaim realizes the folly in his decision and tries his best to stop it. Dragonfire! 
They fight in the skies in anywhere it retreats. Time and the Red Dragon let them go and head to the Imperial capital instead. There they plan to destroy the seeds and get revenge on Mana. Now is not the time to move. We must find and destroy all those that lead them. The seeds have appeared. All the races of the world are hurrying to find them. is blocked by a worm, an ancient dragon of unfathomable power. <gasps> the myths come alive! I cannot go further! The worm! It is a terrible thing to battle the sacred dragon! Let go! You cannot warn me now! His strength is so legendary that even the pair are afraid, and yet they fight on. The worm alternates between shooting bursts of fire and a gigantic green blast that will lock onto your location. It also has dozens of its children orbiting it, constantly firing missiles. It's not a particularly difficult fight, but it's definitely one of attrition. The first time you're playing through, especially if you're on hard mode, sometimes you'll just take enough shit damage to die to the flying bugs before you even get a chance to kill the boss. That being said though, it's not very difficult. Even myths fall before their might. I thank you, Kaim. I have become far stronger than I ever imagined. Nothing is stronger than we are now. Let nothing that values life stand before us. Fools, you have no power against us. After growing so much in power, the once cold heart of the Red Dragon begins to feel warm for its partner. It is nothing. It is you who should take care. Unarmed. 
Really? Time fights his way to the temple in record speeds, and now he must fight waves of enemies that are guarding mana. Holy moly, this mission is miserable. This level drags on forever and spawns some of the most annoying enemies to go against. It's very common for you to get comboed by two or three enemies and then lose like over 80% of your health. And if you die at any point during this mission, you restart all the way at the beginning. The only reason this seems bearable is because I'm over leveled to the highest degree. Fuck this mission. And fuck you. Mama is protected by evil spirits. The priestess is in need of demons. <laughs> the seals are broken. Whatever you do. Now, I cannot be defeated. Such evil hatred in a child such as this. There are still more! Let that one escape! Destroy them! You shall pay dearly for the destruction of this world! I am the Hierarch. This is my duty. Kaim is ready to slay Mana, but Verdelay decides to seal the evil in her heart instead. Do you still try to live? Pathetic. the seal it becomes a giant what monster is this giant giant mana fights in different waves starting out with homing attacks and a shield she eventually upgrades to rings that fire horizontally at you and then eventually they fire in all directions does the child cry for gaia may the gods have mercy the rings do a disgustingly high amount of damage, so I find the most efficient way to win is to just do as much damage as you can before the rings kill you. Mana cries for her mother as she is slain. Oh, stupid! 
stupid, stupid, all of you, fleeing the resurrection. The gods are watching. It is their last judgment. We will be transformed. We fear nothing. We are loved. Living without the love of a parent is detrimental to the mind of a child. You hate me, don't you? Kill me if you want. Come on, warrior. Kill me. Kill me. Don't hold back. Whoppity whop. Kill little Mana. I don't mind. I am loved. I am loved, you know. See? Mother has to love me. The gods love me. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> Kill me. If you don't, I'll, I'll do something. If you hate me, then kill me! Kill me! Just one big smash! Oh, don't hate me, Mother, please! Please, I'm gonna die, you see? The Curl of the Watchers exploited her damaged upbringing and turned her into the tool of the gods. Once free of their influence, Mana begs for the love of her mother. She begs for a death that will not be given. She'll never forgive you. You will not die so easily. <laughs> You will be despised by every soul in this world. Unforgiven for all eternity. <laughs> no, no, no. You will suffer under the unbearable weight of your crimes. You are beyond hope. No, mother. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I won't do it again. I promise, I promise, I even with the defeat of Mana, the world will still end without a seal. Who shall become the seal? We must find a new goddess at once. Another sacrifice to the seal. I am no priest. I am an executioner. Kaim, I am tired again. Bore me as you did. shall be the seal. No human can match my strength. But do you know what you offer? You had best do it before I change my mind.
Ye gods, is it your will that we should live on? Kaim and Angelus have one last heartfelt farewell before she disappears and the world is saved. A love has formed between these two, one that will never again be realized. Four endings remain. Now we go back to the second fight with Inuart. Instead of leaving him with our sister's corpse, Kaim makes the very reasonable decision to chase them down. He lies to escape. So, does he seek the seeds? The seeds of resurrection will do nothing but bring doom to those that use them. Yet Inuart does not care. Furiae must live. Damn the consequences. They finally catch up to Inuart. The guilt of being part of Furiai's death has driven him to madness. It wasn't my fault Furiai died. I'm not responsible. The cult, they fooled me. What do you intend to do now? Me? I... I will bring Furiai back. The seeds will beget a miracle! Miracles cannot be asked for. It's useless. You lie! I don't believe you! I am strong enough, aren't I? Aren't I, Kyam? The gods are with me! Inuart, have you thought of what will become of the world? As long as Furiai is with me, I don't care. What is a world without Furiai? <laughs> That quote goes unreasonably hard. Leave her. Is that what you want to say? Is that the extent of your love? This time, Kaim, I win! <laughs> And now you must fight again. In you are just beyond all reason. Kaim, can you save both him and the goddess? Kaim, you are always the same. You belittle me with pity and thwart my every dream. And you were in the Black Dragon have become much stronger this time around. The myths say the human who enters a seed shall be saved. But do they speak the truth? These are not the seeds of resurrection. They are the seeds of destruction. You cannot understand anyone's heart. You do not know love or jealousy. Once again, the battle ends in a tie, and once again, Inuit retreats. Inuit finally reaches the sea. Without hesitation, he plunges Furiai in.
Periai, you have returned to me. Goddess lives, and they are doomed. Is that the goddess? Must we battle the goddess? What nightmare grips the world? With Furiai transformed into an angelic monstrosity, Kaim must bear witness to his sister's death again, this time by his hand. This is the second hardest fight in the entire game, dude. Thurii only has one phase. Attacks consist of thin slashes that are hard to see and even harder to dodge. Also a move where she summons a bunch of swords surrounding her. You've got like a very short amount of time to destroy the swords before she fires them off at you, and it's virtually impossible to dodge more than two of them. And they do insane damage. So good luck destroying all of them like seven times before you die. This fight is terrible and maybe change the difficulty down to normal just so I could beat it. Shit on kid, oh my gosh. Hate this stupid fucking game. Kai, there is no end for us. But still, you battle on. It turns out the seeds of destruction are interlinked with one another. Before long, an untold number of furry eyes appear. Time surrenders the fight, and the world is destroyed. The seeds never were, and mankind remains unforgiven. Three endings remain. This time you're able to absolutely clap anywhere's cheeks. <clears throat> so good. I can never beat you. Let me die, together with Furiai, I beg of you. <sighs> Can this be happiness? He spends his last moments embracing his love, a death to be envious of. I 
human is at the altar. It must be she at last. With Inuit stopped, you speed off towards the city. Almost. Not much longer. Dragons. Tools of the gods. My servant. The dragons might not be the tools of the gods much longer. My brethren devoured her. A human priestess's untruths cannot warp a dragon's mind. You humans do not know why we dragons came to be. A baby smiles in the barn. It wants to stay in the water. But the seasons must change. Kaim, our pact ends here. Powers greater than we have baited us to battle. What we desire no longer matters. Kaim, your life burns too bright. You have come too far. And now, I must destroy you. They have risen up against Mana, and now they rise up against Alaman. Kaim has gained enough power to threaten their reign, so Angelus ends their bonds and declares a final duel. Forgive me. Only one shall survive. Kaim, if you wish to live, you must first defeat me. Compared to the last fight, this one is actually pretty easy. While the dragon attacks do a lot of damage, they're very easy to dodge and block. Once you learn the patterns, Angelus doesn't stand a chance. Angelus dies, and Kaim destroys the Seeds of Resurrection. Immediately after, he hears the roars of thousands of dragons rising up in protest. With 
a new target for his bloodlust? Kaim rushes to battle with a smile on his face. We do not know if the crew survive, but at least Kaim is enjoying himself. Two endings remain. Let's take a few steps back and focus on a previous mission. One of the three paths that end in Furiai's death have you teleport to the Sky Fortress via a space bridge. We could finish the mission as normal and watch our sister kill herself, or we can turn back and do a little snooping. Is that... Mana? I sense great evil. A great enemy. The priestess... The goddess is close! Let's chase her down. That voice! Could it... Could it be? Mana has been cornered. The watchers they sing. La 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 la. La 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 la. Sarah refuses to let Kaim kill his sister. Stop it! Don't hurt her! Leave my sister alone! Even as she strikes him down. No! Go and stop! You don't understand! Mana is my sister! It's my fault that she became like this! <laughs> Be strong, Mana. Mother, she's already dead. La 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 la. Don't, Don't miss, miss the watchers. La 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 la. He tries to break through to her, but she is too far gone. Silence. You cannot kill me. I am love. Loved by them. More than anyone else. See? Humans still don't, don't know, know what they, they really need. need. Stupid. stupid. They're, They're all stupid. stupid. Salvation lies before them. But stupid people won't be loved. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Those who aren't loved die. It surely dies. Forgive me. Forgive me, Mana. Gollum, please help. In desperation, he asks Gollum for help. In help, he does. Now is the time to feel the love of the gods. A deep love. A great Wait. love. Without Mana alive, the fortress begins to collapse. The crew escapes, but Inuit and Furiai. Furiai! Furiai! Inuit. The gods are dead, Furiai. No more gods! We are free! <laughs> 
It's all right. All is well now. Have no fear. There is a way. What will you do? Buriai, we will give birth to the world. Though paradise is lost, we shall be gods! <laughs> They do not survive. The death of the priestess angers the gods. In retaliation, endless watchers rain down from heaven. These grotesque beings are servants of the gods and desire nothing more than the destruction of the world. Hope of survival is truly lost. So, it does not end with the death of the priestess. These children. This world is beyond the truth of the gods. Not even they can know what will become. Now Kaim battles until death takes him as well. There is nothing to stop you now. Burn it all. Burn everything. Aria, driven by madness, begins to feast on one of the Watcher's corpses. Ariush! What are you doing? She offers herself to the children in response. The greatest of feasts! <laughs> Become chaos, we have descended into hell. Stop your slithering. The way is clear. Run for your life. Uh, wait! The others use her as a distraction to continue.
want you to go. Why can't you come with us? Why? Leonard, I don't want anyone else to die. Sere, you are a fine young lad. You mustn't be afraid. I will not die. Now go, please. Leonard makes the decision to sacrifice himself to create a path for his companions. finally conquered his fear of death. Did Leonard die? Was it my fault? Was it because of me? That big scary creature, it controls time. The time of which Sere speaks, could it be the great time? The great time is the key that holds the fate of the world. So say the legends. The world, the world will be swallowed. What is that? What warps the great time? The heat! My body is burning! You feel a reaction? A reaction? To what? That the child lost his time. Yes, it is possible. As the queen beast begins to devour the world, an idea is formed. Perfect. The great time, perhaps our last chance. There was a brave warrior who drank up all of time, drop by drop. He slept deep beneath the earth, forever young and strong. But then the world became bathed in blood, and the hero awoke. Now is my time, he said. The hero who had drunk of time traveled to the ends of the earth. The hero grew old and weak, and he died. But his time gave the world a new life, the end. It's called the Little Hero. My mother told it to me. The heroes of the stories are the hopes of the tellers. The hero is in you, too. I'm so happy. Come on, fly me there. Can we make it through? It's impossible, impossible. What can one child do? Sere sacrificed his time in his pact, becoming immortal. By releasing that time, he can freeze himself and the Queen Beast in place for all eternity. Yes, I can do it! I am the little hero! 
Enemies surround you on all sides. The best you can do is fly with all your might. This fight is no longer yours. It's the little heroes. <laughs> Angelus launches Sarah at the Queen Beast. Sarah's final moments are spent with thoughts of a sister. and the prophecy becomes true. One ending remains. Under the direction of Yoko Taro, the game went from being a Dynasty Warriors clone to something different. How many times have you heard this story before? The main character kills thousands of bad guys before unlocking a hidden power within himself, defeating the villain, sharing a romantic kiss with the damsel, and living happily ever after. This is the exact thing that Taro dedicated his entire career to subvert. And he started with Drakengard. Nearly every character in Drakengard is a parody of the traditional stereotype of their role. Kaim is the heroic main character who actually uses revenge as an excuse to feed his growing desire to kill. Ariosh is the beautiful female companion that is actually a monster who cannibalizes children. Still hit though, Sere is the naive but useful child that actually is useless 99% of the time. Leonard is the dependable first companion that is actually on the verge of suicide over his depraved urges. The game features themes that were nearly unheard of in the gaming space in the early 2000s. Torture, genocide, incest, cannibalism, cannibalism of children, illegal love of children, murder of children, lots of things involving children actually. Even the events in the game consist of you constantly failing the goals you were set out to do. While other games allow you to be a hero that saves the lives of many people, you never at any point directly save a single civilian life. I bring all this up to say that Drakengard is different, and I just wanted to tell people about it. Before you can attempt the final ending, there is one last requirement. Remember all those weapons I was telling you about earlier? Yeah, you have to collect them all, and that really sucks. For one, there's 65 of them, all of which must be unlocked by different means. 
Another problem is unlocking the weapons is very unclear and for a lot of them can be very tedious. Some maps you might have to clear all the enemies on it to actually unlock the weapons. Some you might have to do within a certain amount of time. Some you might have to do an arbitrary amount of steps or travel to a point on the map where you would never think to travel. To make matters even worse, at the time of the creation of this video, there's no list showing which weapons have that stipulation. So have fun figuring that out. Or not, seeing as I did it for you. Instead of attempting Sarah's strategy, Kaim and Angelus decide to finish things themselves. It's the end! The end! And yet you do not pray. To whom? What gods can help us now? No gods have ever heard your prayers. To catch the lion's cub, you must enter the lion's den. No, Kaim! Don't go! Please don't leave me alone! We will meet again, if we live. But... but at least... Don't forget me! Ever! They charge the beast and are engulfed in a bright light. Time lives hand in hand with good and evil. Hand in hand with good and evil. Hand in hand with good and evil. Kaim, hand in hand I with good and evil. I don't want to die. Hand in hand with good and evil. We too must adapt to this world of chaos. I thought a lot about what I would say for the final ending, but I think it's best if you just experience it for yourself.
This is Bravo-1. Unidentified target has been neutralized. Over and out. I've been thinking for a long time about what I wanted to say to you. I guess, thank you, first of all. But I, I want you to know that you've helped me out more than I'll ever be able to express. Just for being here, just for, in this small way, being a part of my life, I feel like you've given me a reason. It's unrealistic for me to think that I'm gonna meet you in particular, right? So if uh, nothing else, I want you to know that there is someone out there that cares about you. And I just hope you're having a good day. Thank you. <laughs>